I don't know that. My research only went so far, Carlos. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Like just total disappointment. Like you, you finally had some damn notes one time. You did. I have more notes. They just only go so far. Is I'm this just what saying. you teach your students? Like guys, I need you to do some research. Uh, Mr. Turnbull, we read a Wikipedia page. Yeah, good enough. Whatever. That's about what I would do. You are listening to episode 46 of the Unnecessary Nonsense Podcast. Generally, the podcast of two unqualified idiots, but now two medical experts. Hashtag we're not medical experts. I'm Carlos Agazar. And with me somewhere in the seclusion of a ditch carefully quarantined from the rest of the planet is dave turnbull we got to keep people safe carlos that's part of being a so-called medical expert see if you just put so-called in front of it you can pretty much be anything yeah it's you keep you say so-called and you speak out in bad medical advice and you might be able to work for the white house you might be able to lead the COVID 19 team i can't imagine i would do that much worse yeah pretty much it's like whatever we were doing before let's not do that let's do the opposite We're not going to get too political. That's pretty much it for that. However, we do have a fun little show, and I'll be completely honest with you. I started talking with Dave a little bit before we started recording, and I'll be 100% transparent with you. I normally don't do this, but I think this is going to be my favorite episode we've ever done because I'm going to have some serious fun right now. You're really putting it out there for the people, man. Listen, the pressure's on, Dave. If this If this episode doesn't work, it's totally your fault, just so we're clear. I'm fully accepting of this i'm ready I'm ready to accept the blame carlos absolutely part of the reason we're gonna have some fun is that there's a lot going on obviously we're not going to dwell on it from the negative perspective too much we will give some onus to the seriousness because you know you have to acknowledge and respect but also there's a little bit of fun that can be had if you take and enjoy the absurdity of it that is why in advance normally i don't name the episode until after the episode is done but this episode is simply going to be called embracing the nonsense a playoff our podcast name because it is perfect for this situation There's a lot of the little things we're going to talk about. So we're going to kind of talk about where we are, uh, what we've been up to the last week, because obviously lots of things are changing and as things are going on, lots happening. So that's going to be the first part. But then we're also going to talk about, given that a lot of folks are now kind of sitting at home and they're, you know, feasting on content right now, we're going to talk about a couple of different sports related things that you can either do or watch or listen to that we came up with that might be of use for people to give them something to check out or something to enjoy uh, or, you know, while they're sitting at home kind of waiting things out. So there are some options out there and we're going to provide a couple of these possibilities for you that you can at least consider if you haven't already seen or heard from them before. And then, of course, at the very end, we're, not gonna, we're still not going to completely ignore the sports world. It has slowed down, certainly, uh, taking into account coronavirus. But a lot of it uh, still continues in the sense we've still got the NFL offseason. Uh, CBA has been approved. And then we've got uh, some thoughts on the various uh, you know, movements in terms of trades and in terms of uh, free agent signings. So that'll be the very last thing we'll finish up with at the end of the podcast. But first things first, Dave, how's the last week been? What you been up to? Uh, you know what? It's uh, been a lot of um, packing. Uh, We're scheduled to move on April 7th. Uh, We'll see whether that happens or if we're in lockdown by that point. Uh, At this point, I'm I'm not convinced that it's going to happen. And I'm curious about what the legal ramifications of that could be. Uh, But, you know, you still got to act as if it's going ahead because the worst thing that could possibly happen is that we don't do anything and then have to pack everything in a day. So uh, basically it's been running on George's schedule. So get up have breakfast, play with George, he has a nap, we do our thing, he gets up, we play with George, he, we, he has another nap, we do our thing, and so on and so forth. He has three naps in a day before he goes to bed at night. And then it's been taking a daily trip into Ancaster to drop off stuff at the in-laws so that it's not here. And that's about it. You know, I have been going outside doing some walks, I getting some fresh air, which has been good. And then I have been partaking in... You know, watching um, some TV is sort of my escapism, uh, either with my wife or on my own. And that's sort of been it. Listen to the odd podcast, which I'll get into later um, in more specifics. But that's sort of kind of been it, you know. Getting my exercise, given I take George for a walk every day, which is nice. Uh, We've had some half-decent weather this week, which has been not too bad. So, yeah. Uh, And then just doing my best to stay as healthy as I can by not talking to anyone or not seeing anyone. But you just described my entire high school experience. Five years. Takes a lot of work. Takes dedication, Dave. Does it? Even even if it's you, Carlos, I feel like things, some things just come naturally to you. It's kind of what we talked about a little earlier. I wanted you to, for, to start off with because I got things to say. 
this is the time that uh, my years of training have gone. Dave, I had a little bit of fun because uh, because I'm, I have Dave's Instagram, and he took a picture at some point of his cat. And basically his point was that uh, his cat, Leonard, uh, you know, practices social distancing. And he says, like, be like Leonard. And I was sitting there, and it took all of my, my ability to hold back my snark and be like, psh, amateur. I've been at this for 20, social distancing thing for 25 years. I actually had a good comment where I was having a little bit of fun with uh, – with a fellow person who's a little bit more on the introverted side, but we have, we have a little bit of fun with it. The reality is um, for a lot of folks, and I'm going to get that into that. I've got a little story time with Carlos now uh, to tell you all about, but part of it has been interesting. I try to be sympathetic and understanding, but it is interesting to me from a sociological perspective, kind of seeing the different ways that people are responding and reacting to it. And we're just talking about in general here. We're not talking about the health thing specifically. We're just talking about how they're responding to the idea of being at home for so long. Obviously, for folks that go into an office or a place of work all the time, it's weird to work from home. And we're not going to make light of the fact that some people are you know, laid off because of this or simply don't have a workplace to go to now because you know, even if things get turned back on in a little while, you know, business is slowing down. That's the other shoe to drop, but there'll be more time to talk about that later. I'm referring to people who can still work, who are in that fortunate position, but they have to kind of move it from an office environment to a working from home environment. And the the strangeness and disruption that that takes because obviously it's a completely different thing. Uh, people who have done it for a lot of years are already kind of used to it. So for them, it's uh, you know business as usual. But for people that have never done it before, it's, it's a completely different thing. And I'll actually I'll provide a couple of tips maybe that I can offer to some of you who have never done it before that might be helpful to some of you where it applies to you. But um, one of the big things that I noticed in this week, and this is where that little joke came in, is that we're kind of more on that introverted side of the spectrum. So it basically was saying that um, my response to it basically was, this is like people who are struggling with it, we sympathize, we understand. But at the same time, it's almost like asking a professional marathoner if they're winded from walking around the block. It's, uh, you know, for, in terms of a period of time, one thing I noticed. I like that analogy. It, it's, but that's really what it comes down to. I mean, I mean, really, though, like introverts, this is your time to shine. And I, I mean, I'm not maybe as introverted as some people, but I'm definitely more of an introvert than an extrovert. So it's been different having a kid and having to do stuff with the kid, mm -hmm. obviously. But, uh, you know, I don't think it's any great struggle. Let's put it that way for me personally. Yeah. And I think that's where the contrast has been interesting. That's the sociological piece. Because at the end of the day, what we're talking about here is um, there's the physical struggle in terms of people trying to avoid getting sick, trying to keep themselves healthy, trying to do all that. That's the physical piece of it. And most people kind of understand how to make that work. At least the ones who have taken it seriously understand what they need to do to keep their, to keep their bodies you know, in shape, in condition, eat healthy, do whatever you can, you know, take your vitamins, wash your hands, do all the little things you need to do physically to keep it going. But the tough one that a lot of folks I don't think we're ready for, and this is what I've experienced uh, where I'll give my anecdotal you know, stories about it, is that some folks uh, were not prepared for the mental aspect of it. That's where being the introverted thing kind of, this actually works to your favor because being by yourself, and this is just a personal thing for me, being by yourself is not necessarily a big problem for me. I can, I can, I can be alone with my thoughts. It's not a big deal. And it's a weird kind of flip the script moment for me uh, that I noticed during this week as things were going on is that normally I am consistently bored. I am always looking for something to keep me stimulated and to, you know, to have something to do. That's part of the reason this podcast exists. Other than listening to Dave rant about the Saints, which is why we started the whole damn thing in the first place. This is a hobby. You know, we don't make any money off of it. I sure as hell don't. I actually have to pay for it. It costs me money to have this podcast. Um, but I do it because it's a hobby and it's fun. And I just uh, and I like setting this up and, you know, figuring out what equipment to do, what microphones do. Dave is using a microphone that I gave him. All this came about because I was like, hey, what the heck? This is something to do. And the process of editing and the process of recording and all of it is just something to keep me engaged and entertained. We've been doing this already for basically a year. So this isn't like we just started. Yeah, over a year now. Exactly. Exactly. So the thing is, this is one thing. We didn't just start this because of the current situation. We've been doing this for a while. But this is just one way of keeping yourself occupied. But it's only a certain subset of the time. And I think one thing that I noticed for me has always been the case is that I find it works best if you try to like segment your day into these little areas. Dave indirectly described that. Like there it's you know his baby he gives him kind of a schedule so to speak in different blocks of time. But for a lot of folks I think what they struggle with is well what do I do? Well, if you're working from home, one thing that I do is I still treat part of it like I'm going to the office. I in the sense that I'll still get dressed up more or less. You know, you don't have to dress in a three-piece suit, that's not necessary, but act like but you're Carlos. Gonna... No one rocks a three-piece suit like you do. You're not wrong. But the thing is, uh, for most people, it's not necessary. But I'm saying just 
put in the minimum of effort to try to act like you're going somewhere, even if you're not, that helps because it puts some people in the right mindset. And one of the things that I tend to do is, so for me, the routine basically is get up, you know, make your bed, do all that stuff, and then I'll go make my breakfast. Now, one thing that I did notice that is a big change for a lot of folks, including myself, I'll make my breakfast at home, but sometimes if I'm really lazy or tired, I'll go to the office and go get breakfast, you know, at Tim Hortons or whatever. Well, obviously, a lot of folks aren't doing that. So one thing you're going to notice that is a big change for a lot of folks is actually making all your own meals. And obviously, you're not ordering takeout. You're not doing those things. Most people aren't anyway. Um, and that's a big thing. And it's it's a it's a plus and minus thing because yes you're saving money by not doing any of that and cooking your own meals means you can probably make a little bit healthier options and things like that so that's the thing obviously you got to make sure you get your groceries that's a challenge for a lot of folks we acknowledge that but the other aspect of it is that so technically you can make a healthier uh thing and the onus is on you to try to keep yourself in the best possible condition you can so part of that is i still take time to exercise I'm on a conference call. I'm walking around. I have I have wireless headphones. I can be having a conference call, and if I'm not staring at the monitor at that moment, I'm actually walking around the house, going up and down the stairs, doing things. It's it's small things that seem ridiculous, but in the grand scheme of things, it means I'm still moving around. It means I'm not actually stalled and sat down in one place the whole day because that actually isn't conducive. Ironically, I'm actually probably physically in better condition right now, a week later from the last time I was in the office than when I was in the office because in the office, I'm sitting at my desk most of the day. You know, I agreed. I I would say that too, right? I'm making it a point of getting out and I mean, I'm going outside and we're actually (laughs) speaking of ways you can entertain yourself. uh, So George and I go outside and we play a game. So I give Megan some time to do her thing. And and so I'm walking George in the stroller and we play a game. And our game is called avoid people at all costs. So if we come to an intersection and there's several ways to turn and there's people down one way, we don't go down that way. We go down the other way. So we do whatever we can on our walk to avoid other human beings. So we are practicing social distancing, but we're also having a little fun with it uh, when we're outside. And it kind of, I don't know, makes my mind a little more active while I'm walking, which is kind of fun. And I mean, he doesn't really care, but, you know, he's just getting the fresh air. But it's still kind of fun as to sort of you're adding an additional layer onto something you may be doing otherwise that, you know, keeps your brain a little more active, if you will. Can I, uh, can I offer a proposal for renaming your game? I will call it being Carlos any other time of the year or any other decade. A little harder to do when you're in downtown Toronto, though, Carlos. Let's be, that's, that's true, right? You would be shocked how effectively it can be done. You would be shocked, sir. But, no, it's a valid point. It's a, and this is, just, this is just an honest piece of advice. I would just say, hey, if you can, try your best. It, it's finding little ways of, um, of adjusting yourself so that you can still do certain things. Because it's one of those deals where uh, a lot of folks don't think it makes a difference. But it adds up because I got a little walker that I, you know, one of those, um, you know, Fitbit uh, watches things that keep track of your steps. And here's the thing. I put in, I can easily put in 12, 15,000 steps. I put in 20,000 steps in a day inside my house. Remember, yeah, I was going to say that's inside your house. You're not going anywhere. Exactly. And you would think like, how? I've literally walked for miles. Well, as it turns out, walking around doing, and the thing is, I'm not just walking around randomly. I'm actually walking around while working, while doing something. I'm actually doing my job talking through somebody in something and I'm actively participating in the conversation. But what I'm really trying to do is I'm actually just trying to make myself, I can keep myself active and that's an intentional thing. And that doesn't mean by the way, you can go outside, but the idea is to go outside in you know, at a time or a direction or whatever that allows you to have that space to yourself, to be able to go out there and get your fresh air if that's what you need to do and do that. But, um, so we'll get past that. I'll, I'll give you a couple more tips in a minute, but let me let me quickly tell you a little bit more about my week. So the, so the thing that got me and the reason why it got me in this whole frame of thinking in the first place was that I noticed over the course of a week a big change. Obviously, Monday was the first day that my office and all of us moved to work from home for the rest of, you know, indefinite time. We don't know when we're going to be back in the office regularly. We're kind of waiting it out and seeing what happens. But the project I'm working on can keep going on because all of us can work remotely. We've got access. We can do what we need to do. All good. Monday was fine. Monday was a little weird for me because I had to get reacquainted with it, but I have a home office. I have a space and setup that I can do my thing. Cool. By Wednesday was the first day that somebody just admitted, oh man, I'm bored. And I was like, oh boy, if you're bored on day three, this is going to get real interesting. By day five, by Friday, uh, they were like, oh man, I lost, I lost track of what day it was. And like, I'm, I'm, I feel it's like days are dragging. I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. So I don't participate in the conversation too much because like I said, it, my job isn't to rag on these people. I understand. They're very, they're very used to having that more social aspect. You could walk over to somebody's desk and chat about it. I get it. 
So I want to be respectful of that. So I stayed out of the conversation. But my thought process was like, so, Dave, I expect by next week I'll be reporting to you that Lord of the Flies is now in effect. I like it. I think that's, I uh, I think that's the next logical step. We're, we're progressing rapidly to Lord of the Flies. If you don't know the book, now you have time to read it. So that's the thing you can is do. Is it wrong that I'm like kind of gleeful at that? It means you finally, after years and years of friendship, Dave, you're finally learning the ways. Hey, what can I say? I'm trying, man. I'm trying. It means uh, you're finally learning the ways and uh, because that's my default setting. One other little tip I'll give for folks, uh, because we're not going to dwell on this all day. Like I said, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what's happening this week. And I think for the time being, I think in this podcast, this is one thing where we're going to kind of pivot. And I'm just letting everybody know we're going to kind of pivot the podcast. I still want to have sports involved in it because it's a thing I care about. It's a thing I enjoy. It's a thing that's fun. And making fun of, you know, Dave's uh, pretentious cross-country running, that's enjoyable. But right now, none of that's on. And even when it comes back, I'll be honest with you, I don't want to spend the whole podcast talking about it. Sometimes I just want to talk about whatever's on my mind. And that's probably going to be a thing that's going to be a theme of the podcast going forward more so. You're going to notice that. So as we're approaching 50 episodes, we're going to tinker with the format a little bit because, uh, to be honest, there's a lot of great podcasts and things that already do in-depth analysis on different things. So we're not really trying to compete with that. And we're also not really trying to compete with uh, the ones that go into super, super, super death into something niche. So the reality is the one thing we can bring to the table is that we do have different opinions and stuff. You know, uh, my crusade against Tom Brady, my crusade against Mike Trout. You know, I might be alone in the wilderness, but just understand that I'm right and everyone else is wrong. And that's an important thing to understand. And the sooner you understand that, the better for everyone else. For Just for everyone, Dave. Everyone needs to understand that I'm right on this. And you guys just don't realize it. And someday you'll wake up and, my God, it's like he knew before everyone else. But, you know, we'll get there. There'll be time for that. That's really the big thing. Uh, one thing I will suggest to anyone, and this is just my general advice, and take it for what you will. This is not medical advice. This is more working from home. This will help you advice. Uh, one thing I did for myself, even though I had a home office, I had all that available to me. One thing I did for myself is I did order uh, from Amazon because they do still deliver. You know, be careful. And by the way, they're being very careful. I do appreciate it. Uh, they're basically, they won't just abandon the package at your door. They'll basically knock on the door, but they'll leave the package there and like back away. <laughs> so I, I appreciate that they're taking that little bit of effort. You know, your mileage may vary, but you know, be careful still, you know, respect that. But I do appreciate that they're making the adjustments to uh, get stuff to you. One thing I did is I bought a laptop top stand that's actually helpful to me because uh, one thing I'll let you all know is that if you do work from home for extended periods of time you'll want to have the laptop or whatever it is you're looking at be at eye level you don't want to be looking down because your neck will hate you it won't take long I promise you do this for like eight hours a day for a couple of weeks your neck will be screwed up and the last thing you need is your neck jacked up so that's just one suggestion I'd make to you and another one that I did is I bought a wireless keyboard because I wanted to have a full keyboard if I'm going to be doing this for any period of time I want to be able to just type my stuff out and comfortably. Whatever you can do to make yourself a little bit more comfortable will help you. And having like a dedicated office space is key. That's just a good piece of advice in general. Just something I give to you to throw it out to you. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a smart idea. And it's kind of cool that, uh, you know, you're able to still get these things. And you, and as you said, you don't have to go anywhere. You can practice your social distancing and you're good to go, right? Yeah, we'll definitely talk about it in a future podcast, but I do have a lot of very definitive thoughts on kind of what all of this, even beyond the sports realm, this is going to have, is going to be very impactful in a lot of ways, including the way people respond to things and what happens. Even after we quote unquote get back to normal, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. But I've got some thoughts on that, but we're going to save that. We got time. We want to save it a little bit. One other point I'll make to everybody, and this is separate from the rest of the conversation we're going to have. One important point, this is adjacent to the... uh, to the whole idea of different things, because now I'm going to segue us into the conversation of different things you can do while you're at home and you've got all this time and whatever. This is not sports particular, but it's in general. One thing I have noticed an uptick in, because I'm a big YouTube guy, I've noticed an uptick in content of videos in general. Obviously, a lot of people are capitalizing on the coronavirus thing, throwing videos out there. But one thing you'll notice, a lot of at-home workout videos. If uh, maybe you're having some trouble figuring out how to get your exercise in, there's a lot of those. That's a very popular thing right now, trending on YouTube, if you will. A second thing that I've noticed a lot of is a lot of people talking about different routines and things that you can do at home, again, for the same reason. It's not coincidental these videos are coming out now. But a third thing that I will notice that I fully expect to continue for the not-too-distant future for a while, live video content, streamings. So even if it's just, you know, people hanging out and chatting, and then obviously you got the chat window and all that, I expect there'll be a lot more of those. Um, And I can give you a sports example. One thing that I've mentioned before is uh, Steve Dangle, who's like a local sports personality at Sportsnet. Well, on his YouTube channel, he normally does Leaf reviews at the end of every Leafs game. 
obviously there's no Leaf game. But on his YouTube channel now, he's doing, uh, they basically are playing NHL 20 and basically just doing running commentary with him and a couple of his buddies playing NHL 20. And they get thousands of views for that. I like it. A lot of I people mean, just want to have something to watch where they can interact with the host and the content and be able to like do some. I think there is, I think people are underestimating that even if people are stuck inside, that isn't to say you can't communicate. You can still get on, you know, turn on your Skype call, turn on your FaceTime, turn on whatever, chat with a friend, chat with some family that you're not, it's not required that while you're inside that you can't talk to anyone. You are allowed. There, there are ways yeah. to do it. We have access. Plenty of ways to do it. Yeah. And I would say take advantage of that. That's a big thing. Okay. So let's kind of segue that now. So I've already talked about getting online and some options online. So Dave, do you have some suggestions that people can do? This is more sports related now. Some suggestions of things that people can listen to or watch or whatever. Absolutely. My game, yeah, I, my why game. don't I just go I go through my list here. Go for it. Because uh, it's it's fairly extensive. So the first that why I mean this would be in descending order. So what I would recommend doing least to what I would recommend doing most. Sure. Uh, first thing, take this time to rewatch or watch something new, uh, sports documentary or movie. For some reason, I don't own it. And I don't know if it's on, I haven't actually looked for it on Netflix or, or Amazon, which is probably on one of the two. I have a hankering to watch Major League. It I is on why. Amazon Prime, and I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, perfect. You know, there's tons of good stuff out there. And depending on whatever sport you want, Right, you've mentioned previously about um, the what the Amazon version of Hard Knocks. What's it called again? All or Nothing. Yeah, so you mentioned All or Nothing. That's out there. So if you want football content, that's there. They also do, uh, by the way. They've done All Blacks Rugby, and they've done a soccer one before. Nice. I did not realize that, but that's awesome. Now you know. Other movies, classics, White Man Can't Jump. I don't know. Um, the Rookie, The Sandlot. Okay, oh, okay real field. quick, everyone. On the pantheon of sports movies, please... The rookie is what you do when the end of civilization is nigh, and this is the last thing you're watching. I, I, I have a few other suggestions for you that we is, can get okay, to before hold the on, rookie. Hold on. Is this not an appropriate time for that? We're not. You just said the end is nigh, Carlos. I'm just saying this is an appropriate moment to watch that movie then. I am going. No, it's not, Dave. This is, um, as far as the end coming, the end days, um, I'll use a baseball analogy. If the end happening is going to happen over the course of 162 games, we're in the opening series. We literally just got started. You're not even at the all-star break, man. You don't go straight to the end. You don't skip to the end. Hey, man, I like that movie, and I don't care what you say. The rookie sucks. Moving on. Catch up on some of your 30 for 30s that you haven't seen. Uh, or the other something we both watched on Netflix for basketball people, uh, The Carter Effect. Is a really solid one as well. That's right. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, you know, and, and there's a bunch of other things too. I think if you're into whatever you're into, they're there. So go watch some of that. Or uh, TSN keeps putting up their um, engraved on a nation, even though it, which is weird because originally it was all Grey Cup stuff, but then they did these six of them, I think. One on TFC, one on Donovan Bailey, one on the women's uh, hockey team, one on Kenny Omega, the wrestler, mm -hmm. which is actually really interesting. Mm -hmm. And the other one was um, Man vs. Machine, Larry Walker, and Jacques Villeneuve vying for the, what's the word, Lou Marsh Award. So that those are there. Uh, those ones are airing on TV. I'm sure you can get them online as well. So that would be my, my number five thing to do of the list I've made would be sports movies and documentaries. Okay. So let me, while you're talking, let me throw in a couple of sports movies. And stuff. So these are general recommendations. You can... I'm not going to number them like Dave because the I didn't rookie. do that. The Rookie. That's what you do is after your eyeballs, you know, after you contract the illness and you're on your deathbed, then you put The Rookie on. That'll be like the last thing Notice you see. Notice he still says watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right when you're about to die. That, that, still, it's still on the list. It's it's like the first step to go into hell just to, to get you warmed up for it. What I would say, and there, there's a lot of good sports movies. So I actually reel off, and I don't have a list in front of me. So I'm going to do this off the top of my head. I'm going to reel off a bunch of sports movies, and I'm going to try to hit the different sports for everybody. Football-wise, huge fan of Any Given Sunday. Love that movie. That, that one I think is fantastic. I really enjoy that one. If you like the more comedy side, The Replacements is decent. I think it's not bad. Longest Yard gets a lot of acclaim. I'm not a big, huge fan of it, but it's all right. Have you watched the original one? Uh, I haven't got a chance to check it out. I understand it's It's, it's way better. I would doubt I, I, it. It's highly recommend. That's uh, with Burt Reynolds. It's really, really good. I would doubt it. I would suspect it's a lot better because I think Bad the, News Bears on your list? No. Damn um, it, man. What is wrong with you? Crap. Garbage. 
what I would say is the natural. Uh, what I would say is Field of Dreams. If you want to go baseball, that's a good one. Um, what I would say is just thinking baseball strictly. Obviously, Major League, yes, and Major League Two. Uh, I would think it's still very good. Major League One is strong, strong. So this is strictly in the Canadian market. You can get Major League One on Amazon Prime. So it is available if you have Prime. And especially at a time like this, you know, having Prime isn't a bad idea given that they deliver stuff. So you can kind of mix and match the two things. Have a service that can deliver stuff to you. And then at the same time, have access to a streaming service which has some decent movies, such as Major League. I actually watched that this week. It was funny that Dave mentioned it, but I literally did watch it this week. So that's a good one. And then another one that was really interesting for me, and Dave already mentioned the All or Nothing series. Those are awesome. Um, another thing that I can say to you uh, that in the sports realm, and football-wise, um, Varsity Blues is good, I think, is a decent movie. I don't know if it holds up, uh, but it was pretty good when I remember when watching it years ago. That's pretty strong. Baseball movies, you also have Bull Durham is a classic as far as I'm concerned. That's a great baseball movie. That's a good solid one. Um, that's, that's a fantastic movie. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of, of baseball stuff, uh, um, I don't know if it's online because I haven't actually looked for it, but I just heard about it. Um, PBS is streaming for free. Well, I mean, everything's on PBS for free. But uh, Ken Burns' baseball documentary. Yes, that's my understanding. That's right. I don't know if we actually have access to that in Canada, but I think in the U.S. you definitely have it. Oh, if you have a VPN, you have access to it in Canada. That's fair enough. Hashtag sponsors. But that's definitely a thing, for sure. That's a good one for, you know, for a big baseball fan. Anything like a documentary like that, it takes more time. So if well, and that and that series, I mean, it's what 18, 19, 20 episodes if you include his extra one that he did a few years after the original. Uh, so that's it's a time consuming documentary. It's going to take a lot of time. But hey, if you got now is the time where people have time on their hands. So watch it. Did they break the shining up into two? Yeah, it's bought uh, like top half and bottom half. Oh, okay, maybe maybe I'm thinking of it. Maybe the maybe the thing is I've watched like each inning in its own thing, like back to back. I guess maybe I hadn't thought of it as separate. But yeah, okay. If that if they broke it into the top half and the bottom half, yeah, you're right. Plus they had the uh, tenth inning, so I guess the tenth exactly. inning would be okay. So there you go, twenty episodes. That's pretty good, and that's a really good one. If you're a big baseball fan, you want to get caught up on it. You can check out each era. That's kind of cool. Definitely. I've already covered a bunch of different movies. Another one that you can do, and I haven't even touched on hockey. I haven't even touched on, you know, Happy Gilmore if you want to do your comedy. There's there's a go good golf movie. Tin Cup is a good golf movie. I enjoyed that one. I thought that was pretty good. Mighty Ducks. Why Come is on, it? You're, why is it you're picking all the lame kids ones? What, uh, Mighty, Mighty Ducks, Ducks is a great movie. Hold up. Mighty Ducks does not hold up. I it's, don't care whether it holds up. I mean, that was a childhood movie. I don't care whether it holds up or not. I care. The Sandlot holds up. Holds up. The Sandlot holds up. No, it does not. Good God, man. Jesus. Quack, 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 quack. The flying V? Come on, buddy. No, bro. Just nobody. Good Lord. Slapshot, for God's sake. Watch freaking Slapshot if you're going to watch a hockey movie. I'm just trying to think of it as another good hockey movie. So, like, Slapshot. Is, Slapshot's a real good one. Uh, Mystery Goon? Alaska. Is Goon any good? I haven't I actually seen that. I haven't seen it. I don't know. Mystery Alaska was pretty good. I remember that. Uh, that was pretty solid. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Hockey, hockey, hockey. Look, there's here, not as many hockey movies, right? Because it's not as popular in the states. Oh, I'm Mir sure there's Miracle. some like Miracle, half decent. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's yeah. a Disney movie, by the way. Yeah, but the Miracle at least is based on like a thing, like a thing that actually occurred. Um, hey, the Mighty Ducks spawned an actual NHL team. Yes, and not very good one. They had Paul Korea, man. Paul Korea was awesome. He was in his prime, yes. And Timu Solani. Don't forget about Timu. That's true, right? So there you go. Brilliant. Yeah, no. Actually, hockey movies are tough. I will say one thing, though. The Mighty Ducks did have one thing that was good with it. Or you, do you know what it is? One the, thing that was good with it. When they movies. tied the goalie to the net? No. And shot pucks at him? No, that's just a thing that I would do for fun. No, I'm talking about one good thing in the movie, specifically in the movie. And me the rest of us? No. Was there a uh, Martin Sheen cameo in the movie? Because that would have been good. I don't remember. Okay. If you remember, the whole thing with the Mighty Ducks. See? Like I said, now we're having some fun. This is what I want out of this podcast. We're taking tangents, Dave. That's what I want here. So in the Mighty Ducks movie, you one thing is that there's a strong Minnesota theme. Minnesota. Okay? Now remember the era that this was made. In the era that it was made, the Minnesota North Star still existed. So there is a Mike Medano cameo in either the first or the second movie. I don't remember which one. But definitely in one of the two, first two movies. So you can't hate the movie then? I didn't say I hated it. I just said it's not worth watching. It's got Mike Medano in it. How is you it not worth watching? You can watch the one clip then. It'll take about a All minute right. and it's done. And then you can move on to something better like Mystery Alaska. Or pretty much All anything right. else that I named off. Okay, hold on. I want to make sure I cover at least a decent amount. I've already done football. 
Any Given Sunday is still my favorite for football. Baseball is interesting because there's a lot of good ones. I feel like I'm missing one. Did The Natural, did Field of Dreams. I'm just talking about the big ones, the really like strong, strong, solid. Field of Dreams, The Natural, um, Bull Durham I talked about. Um, just trying to think here. Is there any more Kevin Costner baseball movies that I'm forgetting? I don't think so. Uh, no, yes, there is. Oh, What's... there was the one where he was the pitcher who threw the perfect game with Kelly Preston yeah. in it. That wasn't great, but it's okay. I think it's okay. It's not great. I don't remember the name of it, though. Million Dollar Arm, and that's not the movie, but Million Dollar Arm is actually not bad. I guess so. Yeah, I think I've seen that one. I think it's decent. To be honest, Major League kind of spoiled me because really, if I'm talking about a comedy and that, it's like it's the first two were really solid. Although I will say, I think number three For was For Love back... of the Game? Yes, I think that's the one. I think that's the one with uh, Kevin Costner where he was older and he was pitching that no-hitter and all that. Solid movie. Not great. He was also in a movie called Chasing Dreams from 1982, which is a baseball movie. Really? Apparently. Okay. Yeah, I did Ke- not, I've never seen it. Never heard about it until right now, but it's a thing. Okay, fair enough. Um, Just so you know, there's actually a list of the top 10 Kevin Costner baseball films. Yes, there's so many. Would would you like that? What's that? Here you go. Number one, Bull Durham. Yeah, keep going. Number two, Field of Dreams. Yep. So hold on. Before we get into the rest of this list, would would you agree that Bull Durham's better than Field of Dreams? Yes. Yes. Field of Dreams is very sentimental. It's really well done. James Earl Jones in it is brilliant. Like there, there are some tremendously good actors in that movie. I think it's a well done movie, but I think Bull Durham, top to bottom, is more fun. All right, I would agree. I just wanted. It's to, just a more know. fun movie. I accept uh, that take. Okay, for love of the game. Okay, good. Uh, number four, the upside of anger. What? One of Costa's finest performances: is a retired baseball player and alcoholic who gets involved with a single mom neighbor. Two thousand five. <laughs> You just described Tim Cup, but with baseball. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so, so Kevin Costner is like, Kevin, what are we going to do? Let's do a sports movie where I'll, where I'll be an alcoholic or I'll have some kind of a psychological problem or anger issues or anything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think this thing is – hold on a second. So, okay, The Postman, this movie, which no one ever saw or will admit to seeing, may or may not have starred Costner as a slumping slugger and notorious bad boy Jerry Postman Patton who learns a few life lessons during a reluctant stint in Japan. This sounds very much like Mr. Baseball. Wait, what? Hold on, hold on. That's flat out wrong. The Postman was, that was not The Postman. The Postman, I'm, I, I saw that movie. I know, I know what movie they're talking about. The Postman wasn't like a post-apocalyptic thing? Hold on. I don't know. Hold hey, on. J- just for the next keep, thing. Keep going through the list. I, I'll they're also saying he's in a league of their own, which I don't think he was. No, that's Tom Hanks. Yeah, so they literally just put him in a bunch of movies that he's apparently not in. Okay, can I, can I say something about The Postman? I will read you the synopsis of The Postman, okay? You ready? Yes. Okay. In a post-apocalyptic America, a drifter disguises as a postman and delivers mail to the survivors, giving them hope that the government has been restored. That's Kevin Costner. That's The Postman. I see that movie. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, see, I, <laughs> I love your list. Okay. It's like, We're just going to stop. It's like, do you remember, Dave, do you remember Kevin Costner in his finest baseball movie of all time, Apocalypse Now? Yes, actually I do. And his best line in all of baseball movies, the horror. Oh, if only, buddy. If only. Well, apparently in this list, we could just make shit up. I don't care. He, he's in the movie now, and now it's a baseball movie about the horror. I'm cool with it. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we're going to move on because that list is not accurate. Yeah. So, so. Let, me, let me finish what I was doing. I'm almost done here. All right. All right. So I think I've covered mo- most of the stuff. Baseball, I feel pretty satisfied. We've given you some options. So that's cool. Uh, football, I struggle with it a little bit, but I, I think we threw a couple of ideas out there. Uh, I did cover golf a little bit in there. That was cool. Um basketball i'm just trying to think because i wanted to cover the major sports a uh, hockey we we dragged that one out as far as we could go but basketball i'm just trying to think a little bit here you got hoosiers that's a classic people know that one that's a good yeah. one uh coach carter sure yeah i'm, I'm okay with that one uh um, basketball white is, man can't jump yeah for sure um just trying to think like basketball is interesting because you'd think there would be more basketball okay you know what i'll give you I'll give space you. jam hello yeah, yeah, I suppose that's true, especially since they were planning on remaking it with LeBron, so it is relevant. I don't know, I just... I just, Blue Chips? Yeah, Blue Chips was a good one. That was uh, Shaq and Penny Hardaway were in that one. Demi Pro, did you, if, you like the, if you like Will Ferrell, that movie's good. If you don't like Will Ferrell, stay away, stay I, very far away. Wasn't he in Basketballs as well? Will Ferrell? Yeah, I'm, just, I'm asking. I don't, I don't know. know, I don't know. Okay, so... Oh, and obviously the classic... Probably the best one on anyone's basketball list, Air Bud. 
I know you have a kid and everything, but like, is that like license for you to like persistently be lame? Is that like your? I'm intent? not even sure I've seen Air Bud. I just don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. You had an Air Bud marathon at home, and that's well before you had a kid. Don't lie to me. <laughs> I wish the kid had nothing to do with this. This happened five years ago. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, basketball was a 1998 sports sports comedy film. Yeah, I just remember. So yeah, it predates that. So Will Ferrell wouldn't be in it. That's fair enough. What I was gonna say was, yeah, basketball's tricky. Like I, I struggle with that. But I, I'm okay with Space Jam. I just don't know if it's something I would want to watch now. Like it was fine for what it was, and there was some decent stuff in it. But I don't know. I guess I guess I'm a little iffy on that one. But it was an interesting concept. Yeah, I just feel like there should be another basketball movie. I don't know. Okay. I'm not going to dwell on Honestly, it. I know we're moving on, but some of the be- the best sports movies ever, in my opinion, have been um, boxing movies. Yes, you're right. Hold on. And before we go, l- hold on. Let's do a couple. The Rocky movies, that's that's a slam dunk. That's an easy one. Creed uh, was very good. I like that one. Um, I thought that was well done. Uh, what's um, it? Raging Bull, if you yes. like the classics. Yes, I was going to say Raging Bull. I was trying to remember the name of it. I was, I was freezing. Uh, the Hurricane, right? That was good, yep. Um, the Fighter... Have you seen that one? That one doesn't ring a bell. It's the one with um, it's got Mark Wahlberg in it. Okay, then yeah, I definitely. And Christian seen Bale it. and their brothers, I think. I believe you. I just haven't seen it. Yeah, um, Cinderella Man, mm-hmm. with uh, which is like a Depression era uh, movie, Million Dollar Baby, which I quite liked. I thought it was That's well done. I thought it was well done. Yeah. Um, what else? Well, obviously, there's um, Ali, mm. right? Or documentaries about Muhammad Ali, but I'm thinking about the I, when I specifically mentioned that I mentioned the one with uh, Will Smith. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, all of those are. I mean, there's other ones too, but that's enough. Yeah, that's fair. I'll throw in one more basketball one. It's not actually a basketball movie, just so we're clear. But it had a lot of basketball in it. Teen Wolf. Fair enough. I'm just like I said, we're just having a little fun with this. I think that's it for. So that's for movies. Now, one more thing I'll throw in there for everybody, and this is just a thought, a concept that I would give to you. Uh, there's two things I'm going to throw at you. Number one, uh, and we've talked about a lot of movies and whatever. Let me give you a couple of things. One thing that's free and one thing that you have to pay for. So the we can talk more about this in future episodes, but this is just a couple more things to leave you with here in this segment. Okay? Mm-hmm. Number one, uh, on YouTube, if you go to MLB Vault, it's called MLB Vault. I'll put a link in the description to one of the playlists from MLB Vault. They have complete baseball games. Um, and in particular, the one I'm going to give you uh, when I get to it and I pull it up, will be a playlist of World Series baseball games, including a number of significant World Series baseball games in their entirety. So you can check out. So like for us, locally in the GTA Toronto area, we've got the clinching game of the 92 World Series, the clinching game of the 93 World Series. Uh, So that's fun for us. But if that's not what you're into and you want other games, they've got history-making games, no hitters and perfect games, a handful of those, some all-star games if you want to watch that, league championship series. And then the World Series playlist has a bunch of historic games, including... The 86 World Series Game 7, so if you're a Mets fan, that's a good one. The 91 World Series, where Jack Morris outdueled a young John Smoltz in a classic World Series game. And the 1952 World Series, amongst others. These are full games, guys. Solid. Yeah, these are three and four hours, by the way. If you're just looking to kill time and you just want something to watch, that's free if you have YouTube, and bas- which means basically it's free if you have internet. So I've, I've done the best I can. These are 39 videos. Think about that. Two or three hours each. There you go. You got a couple of days worth of watching if you want to do it, and you can break it up for yourself. You can sit down, eat some popcorn, and watch a baseball game. So that's not terrible. Pretty much anything that involves sitting down and eating popcorn has my seal of approval. Yeah, but I'm but I'm just throwing it out there. And by the way, that's basically free as long as you got the internet and and you can put on YouTube. There you go. So we'll give you that playlist. We'll put that in the description of the podcast for you. You can check it out. Second thing I'll suggest to you that that this is a paid service, so it's not going to be the same. But um. If you're a big fan of MMA, UFC Fight Pass is a winner this time, uh, this time, this kind of situation. Even though they're not having new events and new fights, there are a ton of UFC Fight Nights. There are classic UFC cards. They've got different uh, fighting federations. They've got archives of um, Pancreas and a bunch of different uh, fighting federations, including... There's another one that I'm forgetting right now that um, had a lot of fight cards. Shoot. It'll come to me later. But the point is that they've got archive fights from different uh, federations and things all around the world. So the thing is, even if you've never heard of some of these people, some of those fights are classic. And they put together collections for different fighters and such. So if you are an MMA fan, you can go into that library and dig into it. And there are hours and hours and hours. Some of these fight cards are upwards of three or four hours. So you can watch right from the uh, undercard fights all the way to the main events. And by the way, some of the best fights are not the main event cards, main event fights. Some of them are the undercard. There's some brilliant fights in there 
all strewn throughout. And that's assuming you don't have any, you know, box, Blu-ray or DVD sets, which you can kick out this time of year, which is something that I have access to myself, which is something I'm going to take advantage of. But there you go. That's some brilliant stuff. And we haven't even touched on reading material. And I'm not going to do that today. Let's save that for next episode. I'll give you some reading material suggestions. We'll take a week to think about it and come back with some really good uh, maybe books and things you haven't checked out. Yeah. So we got you covered if you need to do something during these times while you're at home. So there you go. Okay. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. Oh, and um, sorry. A final thing I'll do. Uh, I'll talk about more of these as we go on later on episodes. Uh, Let me throw to you the various podcasts of The Athletic. They have some good stuff that are localized with different teams. And one of them is called The Podcast which is uh, co-hosted by Michael Schur, who did The Good Place and Parks and Recreation and um, also a number of other television shows. It's more of an irreverent podcast. It does talk about sports as well, but at the same time, it goes off into different things. Um, and it's kind, of a, it's kind of a fun, you know, change of pace if you just don't want, like, the hard-hitting sports analysis, like what we provide normally. Of course. Uh, can I add uh, uh, some, something else? Go. Since I, I have a, a bunch of other things, but I'll, I'll leave it just as the one. Well, two things, actually. So two, um, or the first of two things, uh, a lot of the athletic podcasts are actually free. Yes. Uh, so they have ones you have to pay for as well. Or if you want like every episode of a particular podcast, I listen to the, um, the Saints one that the, the Saints guys, the beat guys do. Yep. Uh, and they do one episode a week for free. So there's that too. Yeah. Right? I mentioned the podcast because that is available for free. That one is outside for- of the platform as well. Okay. Um, but is this, and the other thing is, um, this was number four on my list, so I guess we can do three, two, one next week. Yep. Um, the rebroadcast of games that are going on. And I, I want to pat- mention a couple of things particularly, because one thing I think you will find particularly interesting about this, and also maybe hilarious. Um, the first one, just straight up, is the, the Raptors championship run is being replayed on TSN and Sportsnet as we speak. Uh, so they started last night, uh, which is Friday, March 20th. And they are continuing one game a night until the championship run is done. So if you follow the Raptors and paid attention to that, last night was game one against Orlando. Uh, tonight will be game two. And then, you know, each series will reach its conclusion until they eventually get to Golden State versus Toronto. And the final that lasted six games. So I think that's awesome that they're doing that. Uh, I'm PVRing all the games and watching, trying to watch them while George is napping. And the second thing is uh, some teams are actually streaming games on their websites, like previous games and the classic games or whatever. But the best thing I found is Arsenal, which is, you know, the cross pretentious cross country running team that I follow the most actually is tweeting or like putting on Facebook as if the games are actually happening live. So they're like, Hey, they're live tweeting. well, no, they're not live, but they're like, no, they're, they're, um, it's like, hey, today we won 5 4. And it's like, what? You didn't play today. And it's like some, you know, game they rebroadcast from when they beat like Newcastle in like 2009, you know? But no, it's I like, get you, but are they playing it at a certain time? Or is it just I, on demand? I think you can get them on demand, but it's like, or, you know what I mean? Or it's like they play it sort of, here's when it's first available kind okay. of thing. I'm not really sure because I haven't actually watched any of them, but I was just scrolling through Facebook. And it's like, we won today. And I was like, what? And then I was like, oh, that's what they're doing. I just found that kind of amusing. No, that's fair. The only reason I didn't really go too deep into that, and uh, it's a valid point, but the only reason I didn't go too deep into that is that um, it, it's really market dependent. Like if you're in the Toronto area and you have access to that, well, then, yeah, sure, that makes sense. I would say, though, that a lot of different networks. Oh, that, that's, that's um, I think, I don't know if you can, I'm going to look. Because obviously Arsenal are a, a, a British team. Yeah. Right? So no, I get you. I'm, I'm not... referring more to the Raptors one. What I'm, re- I'm, I'm actually referring to the Raptors one because if you're like in the United States, you're not going to see that. You're not, you're not seeing no. sports that. But I don't really care about what people in the United States are watching. I mean, I know we may have listeners from all around the world. Uh, you know, something like there's probably something where like we're like the sixth most listened podcast, uh, sports podcast in like Serbia or something, you know? Listen, the, under, the underserved people of Serbia need this podcast, and I will not have you besmirch their name. I'm not besmirching them. I, man, respect to all the Serbs. G- good job there, buddy. G- good save. Good save. Okay. One more thing I'll mention then uh, since they brought it up. Uh, and this is a bit random. I don't know if I agree with this, but uh, let's make this clear. I don't know if I agree with it. However, my understanding, oddly enough, is that Aussie Rules football is still playing. Correct. Yeah, so that is available. As is the uh, Australian Pretenders Cross Country Running League as well. No, it isn't. I'm talking about the rugby one. No, they're both the A-League's playing too. 
Oh, that's psh, whatever. I'm, ta- I'm talking about the Aussie rules, man. Aussie rules. Um, yeah, no, they're still playing uh, games. Um, I guess they feel like they can hide on their cotton and country city thing. Well, but apparently they're. I think that they're still playing games, but don't they have? Um, aren't there like limits on the crowd sizes? I'm pretty sure. It. I'm sure. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where I guess they decided that they're isolated enough that they're taking their chances. A bit of a bold move, but if you're absolutely, I mean, I, I personally don't agree with it, but if it's you're like ab- one of those things, right, where it's like. I don't think they should be doing it, but at the same time, you're like, do I watch this? Because it's actual live sports. Hey, I've subscribed to their service before. It's pretty decent. Uh, I haven't done it yet, but if they're going to keep playing games, I'm going to monitor it. Because if they're going to keep playing games, then I might be inclined to uh, pick up a subscription for a little bit. Also, just so you know, in case you're just looking for random live sports content, not you because you won't care about this, but people in general. Apparently, the Bulgarian Soccer League is still playing. It's the only league in Europe that's still playing. Thank God. But, you know, if you're looking for European soccer, apparently Bulgaria doesn't care. There's no limits on crowd sizes, whatever. They have 300 and some odd cases of COVID-19 for a population of 9.5 million. I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. If you're looking for that, I just read an article about it today. It's kind of, I think that's also dumb, but, you know, they're also ruled by a dictator. So, hey. Okay, cool. I think uh, I think that's actually quite a good. I'm actually very proud of us. That's actually a pretty decent little list of things. Uh, and like I said, we'll talk more because there's more there's more options. But we don't want to spend like two hours on this. No, but, for sure. And I, I have more stuff we can we can bring in next week, which yeah. is great because the notes are already made. So perfect. So that'll give us uh, that'll give us. So next week we'll give you some more options. If for some reason this is not a you know we've hit a lot of different areas. So if for some reason this isn't enough for you, maybe you want some other options. We'll definitely uh, offer a few suggestions that we can definitely throw in there. Okay. So let's move on to talking about the. NFL stuff. If uh, if you've waited patiently through our ramblings up until this point, thank you and congratulations. So now we're going to talk a little NFL free agency. So I'm going to get into this. We've already talked about which ones we want to talk about. Dave's got notes. Hold yourselves down, everyone. Dave has notes. So we're going to do this. All right, let's talk about Dave's personal favorite football player of all time, Tom Brady. Um, why did he suddenly become my favorite football player of all time? Because you have questionable taste, Dave. We already covered this in the movie thing. That's fair. I'll give you that. But uh, Tom Brady is not one of those questionable things. I, I am with you. Hashtag overrated. Yes, indeed. But nonetheless, he has signed with the Tampa Bay Bucks for a, a crap ton of money. Um, Two I, years, $50 million with an additional potential $9 million in incentives. Yeah, And I believe, correct me if I'm mistaken. I believe, See, look at that. Facts that I wrote, wrote down. Look Notes, at, Carlos. Preparation. See what it gets you. This is what this is what the COVID nineteen gives us. Dave, Dave actually prepares and does a damn thing. Um, about time. It's only been uh, over a year. But anyway, the uh, but if, correct me if I'm mistaken on this. I believe that the initial salary part is actually guaranteed money. And I think he's got a lot of clauses where they can't franchise him, they can't trade him. Like there's actually a lot of verbiage in this contract. I don't know that. My research only went so far, Carlos. <sighs> Okay. <laughs> they just total disappointment. Like you, you finally had some damn notes one time. You did. I have more notes. They just only go so far. Is I'm this just what saying. you teach your students? Like, guys, I need you to do some research. Uh, Mr. Turnbull, we read a Wikipedia page. Yeah, good enough. Whatever. That's about what I would do. All right, I'm gonna look this up myself. While you're, while you're, uh, give some thoughts on this while I look up the. Okay, so contract. here, here's, here's some things that I found interesting with this that I think are 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 some. Th- things worth noting. I'm not sure how this is going to work out at all. Uh, I really don't, but keep this in mind. Um, Jameis Winston sucks and was the only member of the 30, 30 club, right? 30 interceptions, 30 touchdowns. That's right. So he's not going to be throwing anymore, which I feel is a good thing for Tampa Bay no matter what. Second of all, Tom Brady actually has weapons he never had in New England in Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. So there's that. Uh they had the, I think they were the top six defense, Tampa Bay, last year. And he's playing a third, they were the third place team, so they've got a third place schedule. For whatever that means, I'm not sure. Because obviously, you know, it's it's not like New England always playing, quote unquote, the best teams. Because they always win the division. Uh, so it theoretically should be a little bit of an easier schedule. I mean, I don't know. There's so much that happened in the NFC South that I, that I, I want to go into as well. Uh, this is why this move intrigued me even more is because of the, the makeup of this division. I mean, we get to see Tom Brady versus Drew Brees, theoretically, barring injury, twice next year. Uh, that's kind of pretty cool, right? I mean, if you're all in on, you know, all-time great aging quarterbacks who are probably past their prime. And Tom Brady. 
who's so what who's the other, who's the other who's the second one then? Whoever's backing up Brady in in Buccaneers, I'm sure he's an all-time great. Uh, you know that 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 intrigues me. Uh, you know I'm I don't know if if Tampa Bay is the best fit for Tom Brady. I'm not y- sure yes, really what is. is. So so let me let me throw in a quick two quick things. I'll throw in here. Number one, the contract is fully guaranteed, so that's number one, which is you know uh, you know pretty fair deal for him. Um, they, he did give them some cap flexibility of the way they structured it, so that's fair. And obviously, as you mentioned, he's got incentives that he can earn, so that's a big thing. And depending on performance. And uh, he also has no tags and no trades. So it is very much a deal where, like, I want this, you give it to me, fully guaranteed all that, but because it's fully guaranteed, I will give you a break on the dollar amount so that you have flexibility. So that's the first thing. Second thing okay. is that um, I do think it's the best fit for him. Um, you know, San Diego, well, sorry, it's not San Diego. The Chargers of Los Angeles uh, were pretty much the other team that was in the bidding. Um, See, so I'm not the only one where you mentioned uh, San Diego. It's, it's very difficult after all the years of saying San Diego to give it up. It, it, it is genuinely difficult. And nobody really thinks of them as an L.A. team. It doesn't matter how hard they try. Just the same. I would say in terms of a talent standpoint, I really do think Tampa Bay has a better shot at giving him. Let's put it this way. If he's going to be a competent quarterback in 2020, maybe 2021, um, the weapons he has are good. Jameis threw for 5,000 yards. The 30 interceptions notwithstanding, he threw for 5,000 yards and 30 touchdowns. And Fitzpatrick lit up the league for a couple of weeks, uh, you know, a couple of years ago with basically these same weapons. So, so you can light up the scoreboard with these guys. Basically, if you don't throw 30 interceptions, you'd probably be a pretty good team. Right. So we'll see what happens. But I think, I think Tampa Bay is a better team automatically right now than they were last year. Regardless of whether they're having a regressing Brady or not, I think he's a better quarterback than Jameis Winston. Yeah, I think the whole argument for the Tom Brady thing with the Buccaneers is that he, presumably he would not throw 30 interceptions and put them behind the eight ball constantly. That would be pretty much the only thing they'd be looking for. And then like occasionally hit our receivers who can go and hit home runs. That's basically what you're looking for. Like, can you hit our receivers in stride so they can score touchdowns? Great. Then you may not get as many touchdowns, but can you still do a couple? Yeah. Cool. Can you not throw 30 interceptions in a year? Okay. Then it's yeah. an improvement. Yeah. That's pretty much, that's the target. However, I would remind everyone and remember this take when the time is right. Jameis Winston got laser surgery. You wait until he becomes the first 6,000-yard, 80-touchdown quarterback, and then you will all wish you had Jameis Winston. Yeah, okay. That's hey. not going to happen. I don't know. But are you I ready gotta... for the other interesting changes in the NFC South? All right, go for it. What do you got? Teddy Bridgewater has gone from New Orleans to the Carolina Panthers. This is and he's getting, he's getting paid starters money, so I'm assuming that Cam Newton's on his way out. He's getting a, he got a three-year, $63 million contract. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, if you're Teddy Bridgewater, why are you leaving New Orleans if you're just going to be a backup somewhere else? You might as well stay the backup in New Orleans, right? That's fair. So he's, he's going there to start, uh, which means changing the guard there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, new head coach. We'll see what goes down there. I think that's an interesting... Obviously, I don't think he's going to be a better quarterback than, you know, Drew Brees or Tom Brady. I mean, he might be better than Tom Brady, let's be real. But... We'll see. I mean, you know, who knows? If Breeze gets injured again like he did this year, I mean, these old guys are, you know, one injury away from Teddy Bridgewater winning the division. Well, it's really going to come down to, so jokes aside on this, it's really going to come down to um, how they structure it around them. Like, Sean Payton knows what to do with Drew Breeze. And Drew Breeze wasn't bad last year. But an important factor you have to consider is that the arm strength is starting to go down. Like, he's not able to make, you know, those throws in those tight windows. What he is is efficient. What he is is he does make good throws, and he makes smart throws. He doesn't make idiotic throws. But if the arm strength isn't there and he tries to hit a window that suddenly closes and somebody picks him off, that's possible. Especially as the season goes on and he gets more reps in and he starts wearing down as the year goes on. That's the concern with these quarterbacks as you, as you approach 40. Is, yeah, you can make a throw here and there, but if I need you down the stretch after you've been playing most of the season, and in this past year, Drew Brees had a couple of games off because he was injured. Like, I think he missed four games, didn't he, uh, thereabouts? Yeah, he missed five games. Yeah, so in reality, that actually extended his shelf life for last season and kept him fresher than he would have been, and they were able to have, uh, they were able to get to the playoffs with a healthy Drew Brees. But the problem is, at the end of the day, like, if he does play a full season, can you trust the arm strength to be there in the playoffs? Yeah, I don't know. And that's I, I mean, based on the last couple of years, no. 
And that's the question. Yeah. So that's going to be a big thing because it's not uh, – you have to think about it this way. Uh, Peyton Manning won a Super Bowl in his last season, but he was washed up, and everybody kind of knew it. And it's not that Peyton's mind went. It's that his arm went. He couldn't throw anymore. And that completely changed his game where, like, all of a sudden you got this guy who knows how to play football. He knows how to call plays. Did P.S. Sorry, just as a as a tangent, a side tangent on Peyton Manning. Did you see the video? I don't know if I sent it to you or not. That it was like from one of the Saints um, Mardi Gras parades, and they're just like throwing beads over the side, and then all of a sudden they just threw onto Peyton Manning. He's like just standing there watching the Mardi Gras parade and caught a bead. Did you see that? No, I didn't see it. It's actually pretty funny. It's like, wait a minute, that that was Peyton Manning. What the hell? Listen, Peyton's everywhere now. So, um, yeah, and then if you look at this too. Uh, Atlanta, we'll see if they get any better. Uh, their defense wasn't great. Their offensive line wasn't great. But they still have Julio Jones. Matt Ryan's not a terrible quarterback. And they added Todd Gurley, which honestly intrigues me, but I really don't think it's going to be a game changer. But in terms of everyone seems to be moving and shaking, I'll get to the Saints in a second, but everybody's making some moves in the NFC South. And I think when all is said and done, this might be the most competitive division in football, potentially. Potentially. You're saying potentially. Of course. Uh, you know, but I mean, probably. Is that better? Wow, that's uh, that's bold by you. Certainly going to be more competitive than the NFC North. Let's put it that way. Yeah, but, I mean, you've got Detroit in the NFC North, so. Um, and then the Saints, the Saints went out and did a couple interesting things. Uh, first of all, they went and got Emmanuel Sanders, who I don't think is going to be a game changer. Uh, he was with the 49ers last year, had a, a decent season. Uh, they signed him for two years, nineteen million dollars. Uh, but I think with him, the Saints now feel they finally have a reliable second receiver to be, you know, the second guy to Mike Thomas. Uh, because what Mike Thomas had, however many thousands, he had a thousand whatever yards, um, NFL record number of catches. The next leading receiver on the team was Ted Ginn Jr. had about 450 yards. So the the discrepancy is huge. So I think signing someone like Emmanuel Sanders is, again, he's, I think, 34 so maybe 33. So you're not looking at this isn't changing everything, but it gives you the per, it gives you something you didn't have before. And I think that's a key. Um, they also re-signed, or well, not re-signed, well, he's coming back. Malcolm Jenkins, uh, Super Bowl uh, winner with the Saints, also Super Bowl winner with the Philadelphia Eagles. Sean Payton has said this is the, the person he regretted letting leave the most. Uh, he's a safety. Uh, he's on a four-year, $32 million contract. He's 32 years old. So he's going to get paid a bunch of money. Um, question remains whether he's going to be a starter because uh, they have a couple of decent safeties. I imagine he they're thinking he's going to replace Vaughn Bell. But I think in terms of leadership, in terms of someone who knows what he's doing and, and can still offer a bunch, I like that move too. Uh, it's also nice to see. It's also nice to see your heroes come home in terms of like Super Bowl winners. So that's what the Saints have done. Uh, I don't think they really needed to do a ton. Um, I think, you know, depending, they've re-signed uh, David Onyemata for their off- uh, defensive line. Maybe if they could pick up another D lineman, that'd be great too. Um, you know, maybe a linebacker. But in terms of the strengths of the Saints, they're still there. Uh, I think they're still poised to take another run at it if, they, if, if, you know, injuries don't get the best of them, which I think it's the same thing with any, any of these teams, right? So I think, I mean, honestly, I think of the teams you're looking at here, realistically with the personnel they have Carolina's probably lost the most they lost a couple of defensive starters too so I would pick them to right now uh, finish in fourth and and really not be challenging for the division but I think everything's going to be competitive in this and I think it's a division to watch look at you bold statement I really don't have anything to add much about the division I will judge these moves based on kind of how I see the team composition it's one of those things where when Dave brought up kind of because I knew a lot of these moves had happened and it is relevant. I, obviously, a lot of this stuff is interesting, and it does matter. The problem that we're looking at right now is because of the current situation with scheduling and with all the sports kind of in turmoil right now, like with everything else, we're wondering, um, will training camp start on time? Doubtful. Uh, how far back will they get pushed back? Will you skip it entirely? Will you just go straight into a regular season? Will the regular season be affected? How will that impact things? So, you know, we're going to talk about these moves in the term of the way that the structure is now projecting to what we think will happen in the season. But that's assuming the season plays out the way you expect it to. I expect they'll play NFL games. I'm not worried about that per se at the moment based on the way things are going. However, it's going to be hard to see say what that structure will look like and how that'll play out. But certainly there's a there's it'll be interesting to see how some of these moves actually translate into on the field games. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's that's, you know, that's why we watch. And 
hopefully NFL starts on time and it go but who knows and now next I've got on our little list Dave uh, Joe Flacco I'll begin with no one cares what do you got uh, that's pretty much what I want to add but also he owes us money important to note that he well I mean I guess somebody cares because he got cut uh, and we're talking about it but yeah um, I'm not too surprised he had a horrible season last year and this very well could be it for Joe Flacco the important question that I have and I think this is pertinent and I hope you took notes on this Will he finally acknowledge his responsibility and culpability in costing us money? Yeah, because that was, a, it was like $15,000 he cost us, right? No, Dave. No, 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 no. All right, quick story time. <clears throat> because the Joe Flacco story doesn't matter. Uh, but I will talk about how Joe Flacco costs us money. So one of the things that we've got uh, locally in our you know various lottery, and this was years ago now, back when he was with Baltimore, um, we played, uh, for a little while we were playing, for most of the season, we played... Uh, Pro line, and basically one of the things you can do is you can play a pro line pools, and much like any other kind of a pool. It's very straightforward. This was a straight wins pool. You would take the entire schedule for a week. You would look at all the different teams, and you just had to strict, strictly pick winners. That's all you got to do. Figure out which team is going to win the game. If Baltimore is playing, say Tennessee, for example, uh, you would say which team's going to win. Now, at the time that this happened, coincidentally, it was a Baltimore and Tennessee game. We had uh, sixteen games on the schedule, and we actually got. 15 of 16 correct. So we nailed 15 to 16 of them. And what happened was we missed out on the Tennessee game because we picked Baltimore, who was that year, I think they were like a 12 or 13 game winner that year. And Tennessee won like four games that season. And of course, that happened to be one of the games Tennessee won because Joe Flacco played like crap. And anyway, so as a result of that, getting 15 of 16 gets you nothing. Not because it was impossible to win anything, but realistically, you needed to be have you need to either have the most wins or be tied for the most wins. Now, when I say this is a lottery, meaning the entire province of Ontario where we are could play potentially, and as it turns out, a lot of folks were really into that kind of pool every single week. So a lot of the jackpots would end up being in the hundreds of thousands. So realistically, even if we had shared the ticket with a lot of other folks. We were looking probably at 20, 30, 50, or if we were one of the minimum ones, we would have gotten at least a couple of hundred thousand dollars. In other words, Joe Flacco owes us money. Big time. Huge. Bigly. Anyway, so that's why I say no one cares about Joe Flacco. He can screw himself, and I want my money. Perfect. DeAndre um, Hopkins to Arizona. Now this, a lot more interesting, intriguing. But what do you what do you want to say about it particularly? I've got a couple I, I, of thoughts. I think Houston's dumb. Can I just say that? Yes. Like why? I mean... For Arizona, this is a fantastic trade. Uh, giving Kyler Murray a weapon like this, arguably uh, Hopkins is the best receiver in the NFL. He's up there. I think he's. You know, I think he's right at the top of that game. You know, it depends who you're asking. Uh, I'm going to tell you Michael Thomas is, but uh, you know it's arguable. And there you go. I think it's just. I just. I don't know. I just don't understand why Houston makes this trade. I just don't. Allow me then to illuminate, Dave. So our good friends at First Take on ESPN, our good buddy, you, my buddy, your buddy, everyone's buddy, Stephen A. Smith, was having a conversation with uh, a few folks connected to it. I believe Michael Irvin is the one who actually initially made the statement, but some more things have been elaborated, and it was talked about on First Take. But specifically, the conversation that apparently happened was, um, you know, through channels. Apparently, the issue, one of multitude of issues, was DeAndre Hopkins is very much a, more of a leadership kind of guy in the sense that you know players respect him and he has a, and he has a good voice in the room. Now the thing is that apparently um, Bill O'Brien had some issues or concerns with you know kind of the authority that he kind of indirectly wields, and this is what happens in any workplace. By the way, this isn't just football. This isn't just sports. Sometimes there'll be people who are not managers, but they kind of act in that role because they're like the, they're seen as like. You know, we will follow as you go. You know, you're kind of leading by example, even if you you don't have direct authority. Well, not everybody likes that. Uh, so apparently Bill O'Brien wasn't too keen on it and wasn't happy with it. Um, and then called a meeting with DeAndre Hopkins to discuss the matter. And again, this is all hearsay, so I'm just giving it to you as I've heard it from these sources who will uh, who were left anonymous. So we'll leave it that way. But ESPN did report it. So apparently in that course of that conversation, Bill O'Brien began it with uh, with DeAndre Hopkins by saying, you know, I had a, the last time I had a meeting like this was with Aaron Hernandez. Ugh. And that's a that's a good lead. You know, that's a good way to start. And apparently he had some issues with uh, DeAndre Hopkins, baby mama being around and a bunch of random stuff that really has nothing to do with anything. So the point is, DeAndre Hopkins was tremendously offended by this uh, conversation. Uh, and he was basically like, screw you. 
Uh, and in the end, the result was Bill O'Brien apparently couldn't reconcile with him. But he basically created this riff where there wasn't one. And they were not able to reconcile. And it basically resulted uh, in Bill O'Brien getting rid of him for a bag of pucks, even though it's football. Yes. I think it's still dumb, 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 dumb. But uh, does not that add a little element add an extra like layer of why are you in charge of anything? Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah. So there you go. Houston Texans, everybody. Good luck to Deshaun Watson on that. Yeah. On a related note, if I was Deshaun Watson, can I offer some advice? Ask for a trade. Yeah, seriously. Get out. Get out now. There was a movie. It was called Get Out. Follow that advice. Absolutely. Stefan Diggs to Buffalo. Woo. Let's go, Buffalo. I, hey, I think Buffalo's make, Buffalo is making some moves. Well, the thing is, the team's decent. I think, that, I, think um, I like Josh. Uh, it's Josh Allen, right? That is correct. He's that Allen. Good. Because I feel like there's 100 Allens, so it's Josh Allen. Uh, no, I think Josh Allen's an athletic quarterback. He can move. He can do a couple of things. He makes questionable decisions, but giving him more weapons is not a bad thing. It can't possibly hurt to have an additional option, especially a veteran weapon who can help and adjust to his game and give him another and give him an open receiver so he can try to make a couple of throws. That's really what's going to help him, his development and help him become a better quarterback. But that's really what it's going to come down to because if – Josh Allen cannot consistently uh, improve upon what he's doing right now. We're looking at a Buffalo team that already was actually a playoff team, and they were and they were decent enough to get to the playoffs. But long term, and the Patriots are presumably diminished, so that only improves their opportunities. So if you're Buffalo, you're like the time is nigh. Now, now is when you try to take a quantum leap. You can take this division; it can become yours. You're playing with the Jets. That, like think of this division: if the Patriots decline, which we would expect they would. But if the Patriots are in decline, even it's temporary. Even if Bill Belichick writes the ship within a couple of seasons, that means for now they're down. So they're not there. So all of a sudden, another slot opens up. So if you're Buffalo, you can totally take the vacuum that has just been created because your opposition is the Jets and the Miami freaking Dolphins. They should win this division. Hashtag Buffalo Bills division winners. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see who who was really was it is it Belichick or is it Brady? We'll but I'm find saying, out this but, year. But but from the Buffalo Bills perspective, does that not even make more sense? So like, no, go for it. Do what you need to do to push the kid forward and help him. And like, if you can win the division, guess what? You're in the play. Your fan base will not hate you for that. Go get it. Make it happen. I I don't know. I think this move is saying, hey, Buffalo's going for it. They also got Josh Norman from I believe he was a, with the, yeah he was with the Panthers mm-hmm. uh, as for a cornerback. So they made some good moves, and I, I think they're really saying, hey, this is going to be our year, or at least that's what they're saying. I mean, I'm not saying they're going to win the Super Bowl, but I think, why not? The division is wide open for the first time in years. Do it. And the only other thing I wanted to say NFL-wise uh, uh, is to acknowledge and mention a couple of things. Uh, they have signed a new CBA, which was in, and here's a couple of things that I find interesting. There's three things in here. Obviously, there's way more in here that we could talk about. But three things that stand out to me that I thought I would mention. Number one, the vote was 1,109 to 959 uh, by the NFLPA. Mm-hmm. So it's quite close, which I found interesting. Um, we'll see if there's, you know, more comes out about that, you know, once it sort of is in play about, oh, I voted against this. This was a horrible th- idea in the fir- and I don't know why we did in the first place or stuff like that. We'll yeah. see. Can I throw a quick uh, item about that, though? For sure you can. Okay, so you're totally right, and I think it's a valid question, but I think one factor that completely changed the calculus. So there's two parts to this. Number one, there's a lot of people who could have voted that didn't. So if they complain about it, they have no right because this directly impacted them. So number two, I do understand it from the perspective of certain rank-and-file members that are on the lower pay scale who would be getting a salary boost based on this deal. So I get it from their perspective. I also get it from the perspective of the richer veterans who are like, long-term, this is, deal is going to suck for us. But one mitigating factor that changes the calculus on all of this, and this is very important and we can't downplay this, as soon as the coronavirus thing resulted in the likelihood that, number one, you're going to have delay in games, all that possibly, potentially down the road. Football isn't for a while, so it could be minimal impact for them. But economically, the impact could be huge. And if the economic impact is huge, that means revenues could go down. That means from the player's perspective, locking in certain guarantees for 10 years when there's a possibility that for the first several years, the economics suddenly skew away from where they were even a couple of months ago 
might might be actually advantageous. You might have actually been holding – at least you took something out of it as opposed to waiting another couple of months where suddenly the landscape has changed so much. It was like, okay, so you know how we were offering you 48%? The best we can do is 40 Like it, it can potentially shift completely against you. Yeah, no, this is fair. That's an important factor. I'm just saying from the from the perspective of a lot of the players, I wouldn't blame them if they looked at the landscape and said, suddenly this is uncertain and I would rather take the job and the deal for 10 years that at least guarantees me some money rather than try to figure out the financial ramifications of a lot of businesses having issues in the next six months to a year. Yeah, no, this is fair. Um, they will no longer be suspending people if they test positive for marijuana. To this, I say... Yes. Finally, this was dumb in the first place. I can't believe they suspended people for this in the first place. It was stupid. I'm glad they got rid of it. And I'm saying this as someone who does not partake in marijuana. I get your point. Um, and I don't disagree. Uh, I think it was silly for them to bother with that. I think it was a waste of the NFL's time. If a player, th- that's not a performance enhancer. So from the, from the sport perspective, who cares? Um, I will also say, though, at the same time, so there's two parts to this. Number one, I don't care. Uh, one way or the other. Um, them taking it away is perfectly fine with me. I think it's reasonable. Um, I thought it was a silly thing to suspend a player for. However, with all that said, it also isn't something that you have to do. It also isn't something that you necessarily needed to do. It also isn't something necessarily... Again, it's not a performance enhancer, so it doesn't help you that way. But at the same time, like if your workplace says you can't smoke weed and you want to work, those are the conditions that you know are in place. What's the problem? So I I don't have an issue with them being like, hey, guys, this is a stupid thing to spend for. That's fine. That's a valid argument. But at the same time, like if they had kept it in place, like, do I care? No. Like at the end of the day, you don't have to smoke weed. And if you really want to, well, then retire or quit. So it's like, fine. Uh, To me, this is a a non-issue, even the sense that I'm cool with it if the law, the rule is in place. And I'm cool with it if it's not. Them taking it away, I'm cool with that, too. I'm fine. Great. Sounds good. All right. Um, and the last bit, which I find interesting as well, is Goodell is no longer the arbiter in discipline cases. And he's, he will be the, um, the appeals judge, which I think is – I have no issue with that. I mean, maybe I have a little bit of an issue with that. I think, honestly, I'd rather him be the arbiter and not the appeals guy. But at least he's not on both ends of the spectrum now, which he was before, right? Like, why – it doesn't make any sense to have the person who can decide punishment be the person who also – is the the one deciding the appeal too? That's stupid. So now somebody else decides the punishment, and then he's the appeals judge. Sure. Again, I think I'd rather have it the other way around that he decides the punishment, and somebody else is the appeals judge. But at least he's not both, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I think it, I think it'd be tricky as the commissioner to accept the lesser of the two roles. I think he would rather be the Supreme Court than the appellate court. Like well, just I'm sure the, you'd rather be for yeah, sure, but I think, but I think honestly, it's an optics thing. I, I really do. Like, I don't, I don't think Roger Dale really cares one way or the other, but it's an optics thing. I don't think he's going to accept the lesser of he. He'll be like, look, if you appeal it, I'll judge then from there, but I'll let somebody else make the initial decision. That way, you don't complain to me about the initial decision. So if it doesn't go to appeal, then I don't even have to deal with it. But otherwise, I'll take care of it at the if I'll be the last line of defense. Then I'm cool with that. Mm-hmm. Anything else CBA wise you want to talk about there? No, that's it, Carlos. Okay, I, I'm I'm out of points now. Oh, my God. His deep, extensive research going all the way to the headline of Wikipedia. All right. So let's talk about uh, CBA-wise. I don't have a lot to add. One thing I will say, though, is that I is that the 17th game regular season is going to be interesting. I do find it has tremendous ramifications, the extra playoff team in that format, adding another playoff team. That's huge because there's a lot of teams who are now going to be in contention. We're going to get a lot more 8-8. Eight and eight. And even seven and nine teams that are suddenly in the hunt, uh, potentially for a playoff spot, that's going to be interesting, a little weird. Um, the other thing also that's going to have a long-term impact on a lot of playoffs will be that only the f- number one team gets the bye, uh, which I'm actually okay with. I think it's kind of stupid having two teams have the bye. I'm actually kind of all right with that. Let them play. Let them play it out. It's like being second place is fine, but it's second place in the conference is fine, but it's not as good as being first. I think first you should be rewarded. Second, you get, a, you get a more favorable matchup, but I'm okay with you playing the game. Let it happen. Uh, but like I said, long term, it will have some ramifications in the sense of how these matchups are going to go because you're going to have a lot of live low seeds that suddenly could bump off a second seed very yeah. easily. And that's huge. Um, now, mind you, the other thing is it keeps a lot of teams fans in the hunt that would otherwise have been out. So that'd be kind of it. Because under that system, I, I think I saw a graphic somewhere, Pittsburgh would have made the playoffs last year. And that would have been right. fascinating. Yes, for sure it would have been. Like, so, like, uh, I don't have an issue with it. 
I think the NFL still strikes a good balance. Um, it's not baseball has had this for years where like for years they had almost too few uh, playoff teams. The NHL and the NBA probably have too many, but like there is a there is a sweet spot in the middle. It's tough. Like you're trying to figure when more than half the league makes the playoffs, that's hard um, to justify. And I think the NFL still has a good balance with the number, and the and Major League Baseball, I think, still has a good balance with the number. But you can yeah. quickly go the, the other way if you're not paying attention to it. For sure, you can. Yeah. So for that's sure. the, that's all I wanted to throw in there about that. There's some uh, some facts for the people on you know the CBA, or as I like to call it, our hard hitting analysis of the new CBA. Is that what you would like to call it? I'd like to call it that. Yeah, I'm not saying that's what it actually is, but. Yep, that was a hard hitting with a wrapped hand inside of a pillow. Uh, with a broken wrist. Analysis of the CBA. Fair enough. You know, I just gave the people the visual. I wanted to help them out with it. So that's it for us, I think, uh, as far as that's concerned. What we're looking forward to is the day when we don't have to compromise uh, our discussions and coverage based on circumstances yeah. beyond our when control. we can get back to our MLB preview. Yeah, someday. Someday. Hey, we've got two divisions left. We are committed to bringing you those two divisions. We will when it is prudent. Yes, yes, indeed. So that'll be it for us. Uh, obviously, a longer version of the podcast than normal. Uh, a lot of it is really going to depend on how things go. We're, we, like yourselves, are impacted by what's going on in the rest of the world. But at the very least, you know, that gave Dave a chance to do some deep analysis and research. You know, he, I saw him crunching the numbers. I could see steam rising off in the distance as his number machine was going off. That was, uh, that was good times. Future calculations will be done in an abacus for, for environmental friendliness. Anyway, our ridiculousness aside, so this episode really was genuinely embracing the nonsense, and that's going to be kind of the thing going forward. We're going to see what happens, obviously, as things go on, but we're going to have another episode next week. We're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to talk a little bit more, like I said, about some other things that people can do. We gave you a bunch of suggestions. Go check out some of those movies. They're fun. Don't check out Mighty Air Ducks. Air Don't check out Mighty Ducks. It sucks. Don't check out Air Bud. It sucks more. Sandlot, don't even bother. But okay. the So, uh, hold on. Out of The Rookie, The Sandlot, Air Bud, Bud and the other movie that I literally just Mighty Ducks, which one is would you say is the absolute worst of the bunch? The worst? Yeah. Dear God! Oh my goodness! Air Bud. <laughs> okay. And 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 if, and if you were you had a gun to your head and were forced to watch one, forced to watch one? Yeah. Or would you just take the bullet? No, no, Mighty Ducks, just because Madano's in it. All right, fair enough. Yeah, like the, that. Relatively speaking, that's. I don't think it's a good movie, but I, I that would be the most watchable. There you that. go, people. Yeah, so that'd be the most watchable of bad options. Guys, there's some really good options, I promise. We, we listed off a whole bunch of really good ones. So check those out. All right, we'll be back in a future episode. Like I said, we're not going to do the social media thing because, like I said, it's not... We haven't been doing too much with it, and I, I'm going to try to maybe look into doing some more with it, but especially now we have a little time to consider it, but we'll get into all that. So for now, what you need to know, shameless plugs-wise, is that we've got our... On YouTube, you can check out an archive of this podcast. You can look up Unnecessary Nonsense Podcast. You'll find an archive version with a cartoon version of our faces for the logo. You'll find that. You can check us out on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts. If you just want to check out audio without the cartoon version of our faces which adds nothing because there's no video so that's it for us that'll be this episode episode 46 of unnecessary nonsense podcast in the book thanks as always for listening we'll catch you in the next one